All right. Um, hi, everyone. I'm glad to be here today. I'm um, going to talk today about AI and privacy. Um, not much about fire, <laughs> I'm sorry. But instead, I'm going to speak about what's on top of it. Um, fire is great because it allows to share data um, with different actors. So we can work on it, we can develop model, models on it. But with medical data, it's not enough. We also have to guarantee privacy. All right, just a, word of a, a few words about me. Uh, I'm a French uh, student, recently gra graduated, actually. Um, I'm also a developer, and I co-founded um, my own startup, Lumo Medical, in France, um, with the mission to make medicine safer. Um, we want to reduce all the risk around a patient, and we want to assure that the quality of his care is maximized, no matter the situation, no matter the place. And how we want to do it with the help of AI. So we help the, clinic, the clinician to make the best decision with the help of uh, CDS, with the help of AI, that um, access all the knowledge uh, from uh, medical sectors. So today what we do is we target high-risk patients with uh, this kind of interface and uh, then the, clinic, the clinician can take a uh, decision. All right. So today I'm going to speak um, about the setup of a project we have with three different French hospitals that want to predict the length of stay of a patient. Um, the, the project here is to use the data commonly of these three hospitals, and it's very unique, and uh, I will show you how, why. So we had a question immediately is, we have three different hospitals, a lot of data, and the question was, can we guarantee privacy while building a model that can take a lot of different data of different structure? For that, I'm going to introduce two tools. Uh, that is federated learning and differential privacy. So just before going in, I uh, just want to remind you of uh, some aspect of AI, specifically in healthcare. So about AI, quick definition, Wikipedia, thank you. Um, simple, any technique who mimics human behavior. So here, we are not speaking about super, superhuman robots. We are not talking about that. But we are speaking about weak AI. So um, an algorithm that helps you to do a task automatically. How we do that? With different uh, fields. Um, I just wanted to uh, differenti differentiate these terms that come a lot. Um, so artificial intelligence, this is the whole field. Um, machine learning. It's something we hear a lot about, and deep learning. So ma machine learning is uh, quite clear. We want to make the machine learn on the data, learn some rules, some patterns, um, with uh, stati statistical uh, methods. Um, but artificial intelligence are also systems who are built on knowledge with rules, and we don't want to forget that. Basically, if you do some if and then, uh, it's artificial intelligence also. Um, and, and deep learning is a technique of machine learning um, based on neural networks. And it's a technique that um, can uh, learn rules, but also learn inherent representation of data. So you can have more complex patterns, uh, for example, detect a face, what is a face, a nose, eyes, and so on. And um, with deep learning, you can learn these kind of concepts. So here we are going to, to speak about deep learning. So I hope it, this is all clear for you. Yeah. Um, 
and one specific task in um, artificial intelligence is what we call supervised learning. Uh, this is very common, this is the most common one. Um, what it is, is we, you have data, let's say images of dog and cat, and you have labels. So you label the data, uh, you say what it is. Okay, this image is a dog, this one is a cat. And you train um, an algorithm to predict what's the data with the label. So what's the output of supervised learning is a function that um, take some data in input and output a prediction, the label, the target. All right. So very common uh, AI uh, use case, image classification, autonomous vehicles, voice to text, Siri, and so on. You know, you know that. All right. So what is specific? What is unique? Uh, for AI in healthcare? Well, this is very challenging. Why? Because on one hand, there is a big need of AI in the sector. Uh, treatments are, get, are getting more and more complex. There are a lot of knowledge to know. So human need some help to be um, as efficient, as good as possible. But in the meantime, especially in France, <laughs> Uh, you don't have, uh, you have limited resources, um, less and less resources, in fact, and professionals are fed up, they are in, under a lot of pressure. So, on the one hand, big need, and on the other hand, big barriers. Uh, you know that um, e there is a lack of interoper interoperability, data is hard to access, and so on, and so on. So, big need, high challenge, uh, this is very cool. So what, what do we see in theory? Well, if you, if you look at the media, you see all kind of great stuff. Uh, you see that AI is going to solve uh, all our problems. Uh, you can predict death, you can predict the diagnosis, you are better than doctors. So, all right, <laughs> if, you, if you look at that, you say, We're, we are all safe. It's, it's really great. Now, in practice, it's a bit different. So if, you go, if we go back at a use case, so we have three different hospitals and we want to predict the length of stay. So we want to do it in real time, we want to, to do it for each patient. And the stakes are quite high. Uh, with this kind of prediction, you can reduce cost um, because you are more organized. You can target patients that are in need so you can uh, better uh, take care of them, and you can also find improvements in your systems, so really high stakes. This is a common use case, but what is very unique is here we have three different hospitals, and we want to be able to transfer what we learn from one site to the other. So, for example, I have a patient with a cardiovascular disease that comes to hospital A, and I have hospital B, who is an expert in this field. So I want to do an algorithm that learns something from hospital B, the expert, and can apply what you learn in hospital A for the patient. And this is very hard to do. So, all right, let's do it. I'm a data scientist. I know I have to do to build these models. I have my three hospitals. I gather the data. Okay, I have all my data in, in, in position. I spend some time to, to clean it, to understand it. I take the state-of-the-art model. Uh, I take the last one from Google, all clear, very nice uh, nice article on them. And then I sell it, I'm a millionaire, and I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> well, maybe it's not that easy, I forget. Maybe um, I have to spend some time with the IT team to, to extract the data. Okay, uh, it's a bit complex, I can help you guys. Um, well, first I have also to have uh, storage uh, infrastructure ready for that. Um, well, also I have to convince everyone, your data is going to be fine, no worries. I can guarantee, uh, well, I have the data, I have to map it, and so on, so on, you get it. It's not that easy. 
So what is wrong? Basically, we cannot do this pattern uh, in this uh, in this situation. First, um, databases have different schemas. You know that they don't speak the same language. This is the first problem. Uh, hospital are very resilient to cloud storage. Um, how can we, you guarantee uh, privacy of my data? How do you guarantee there are um, there are no leaks uh, and so on and so on? So cloud computing is uh, quite hard, and I don't guarantee privacy at all. So four problems, four questions how to make them speak the same languages, how to transfer what I learn from one place to another, how can I guarantee the privacy, and then how can I build a long-term relationship with my hospitals. So for the first question, uh, I'm not going to, to go too much in detail. I will let my uh, friends from Akan who are working on, on with us on this project. And I invite you to go to their talks. Uh, one is tomorrow, the other on Friday. Um, but the, uh, the idea is we are going to take the, the schema from one hospital, uh, use our tool to map this schema to fire, store it in a um, fire persistence layer, and then we can exploit the, um, um, the data with the same language. All right. First program done, very quick. <laughs> For the rest, I'm going to introduce, like I said, two tools, federated learning, differential privacy. So about federated learning, the concept is very simple. I want to move the model, I don't want to move the data. In my case, uh, I want to make the model move from one place to another, and the data never leave a site. Uh, this term is quite new, the, the concept is quite new. It, it has been introduced by Google in 2016. And today we see some application, uh, especially with mobile phones. Uh, so you have your, this use case uh, of text typing suggestion. So basically when you type on your smartphone, you have some suggestion for the next word. Um, and to do that, they need to learn how you type. So instead of uh, gathering all your messages, all uh, your secret uh, <laughs> little messages, uh, they send the model, they train it on your mobile phone, and then they get the model back. So, it's, uh, so Apple do it, and uh, Google do it also. So the concept already exists, and we want to do the same in the healthcare. We have two open source libraries. Uh, and I think others, but they are the mains. Uh, one is PySift from um, OpenMind, and the other uh, TensorFlow Federated from Google. Uh, here I'm, I'm going to take, we, we are going to, to use PySift uh, from OpenMind. Uh, just before going a bit in, into the code, um, just a remind of what are tensors. So the, these are basically the, um, the most basic elements for deep learning. A tensor is a multi-dimensional array, and they represent everything you need. They represent your data. They represent your model, the weights of your model. And on these tensors, you do basic operation, multiplication, addition, and with that, you do everything you, you have everything you need to do deep learning. So, tensors, the basics, and with PySift. Uh, we'll be able to uh, remote, uh, to execute remotely the operation uh, I showed you. So what it look, look like, we, looks like with uh, the PySift, very simple. So here I have two, two sites, hospital A and B, and I, I have my model owner. So first I I um, declare some reference to the to the worker that are on site um, with WebSockets. I ask to the worker to load some data set. So the data set of my patient, my labels, well, how much time uh, do a patient stay? And then I'm going to send instructions to the workers. 
So first I send the, the model, very simple, one line of code. Then I train the model. So how do I do that? I compute the prediction of the model um, with the data. So model, uh, so uh, the output um, is here. And we compute what we call a loss. It's the difference uh, between my target and what the model predicts. So I have my prediction, I have my real target, I know how, how much time my patient stayed, and then I optimize my model to be closer to this prediction, to this target. And then my model is optimized, I get the model back. So really simple, few lines of, of, of codes, and you have, uh, like that, federated learning. I invite you, if you're interested, to, to see the other examples. They are very simple, and uh, they are on GitHub. All right, so with uh, this tool, I can now uh, say, OK, I can learn from one side to another without moving the data. So uh, my second problem, it's OK, it's done. Now we can, we can ask ourselves, uh, is the privacy guaranteed? I mean, the data is not moving. so. We good. Well, not exactly. If I stay, if I take the the example of the text suggestion type um, back, um, we can see there is a, a, a problem. So I have a, my model, which is basically a tensor, of, um, a lot of uh, coefficients, and each of let's say each of these uh, coefficients match a word uh, in the English uh, vocabulary. So I send the model to Alice, who wants type I love fire. The model learn on the, the messages from Alice and send me the model back. And when I, I look at the difference between what I send and when I, what I have, I can see what are the coefficients that change. So I can assume what are the words that Alice type. If I see I love fire, uh, that uh, that change, well, I can say at least type I love fire. So with federated learning, you cannot guarantee the privacy of your data. Another example is uh, is this: um, if you have a model that trains on images to to recognize faces, you gave them you give them sorry you give it uh, some images uh, to train, and then you have the model. And what researchers uh, showed is that on the model learn and overfit on the input. So he, he memorized some faces, basically. And they showed that they can reconstruct um, some, some of the inputs only with the model. So two examples that show that if you, if you have only the model, um, you cannot guarantee privacy. So for that, second tool, differential privacy. So it's very basic. The idea is one letter. It's an epsilon. It's a little something. What we want to do is to jitter a bit the results of the, of the, the model um, to, to hide a bit uh, about the information. If we take the example back, I send, I have still this model um, that I sent to Alice. She, she trained the model, she sent it back, but she adds a little something. She jitter a bit the results. So when I compared the two models, I don't see any more the words I love fire uh, that easily because there are some noise added, some randomness. And if I, if I train this model collectively on a lot of different mobile phones, a lot of people in this room who type I love fire, but at the end, I I'm still going to, to have this pattern that will emerge. So collectively, we train the model, but individually, you cannot say this one person said I love fire. So this is how you guarantee privacy. What is really great is that it's a um, mathematical concept that is controlled by a parameter, so epsilon, and it's, it's basically a float. And this parameter 
is the control, is the cursor between privacy and accuracy. So with that, we have defi definition of what is privacy. Privacy is the opposite of accuracy. <laughs> yeah. And th this rig, uh, so it's, it's not easy to choose what is the best value, because what is my best for privacy, what? But with this kind of uh, parameter, you can have an open discussion with, for example, the hospital, and say, okay, I can guarantee the privacy of your patients, but how much privacy are you willing to lose? So this is great. So usually, epsilon is, is one. Uh, we can find also three in the literature. Well, this is kind of uh, values. Okay, with PySeed, what the code lo looks like? Well, it's really simple. We just add a parameter, epsilon, when we get the model back. So we send the model, we train the model, basically. And when we get it back, we say, okay, add a little something, jitter, a bit the result. I also invite you to see what Google um, published uh, in September. It's really great. They published their, their library named Differential Privacy. And what is really interesting is the, the possibility to do uh, differential privacy on SQL. The idea is that you add a keyword, select with anonymization, and then you can execute some um, aggregation function. Uh, sum, count, uh, and so on. And here we query uh, to the database um, to count all the patients that have diabetes and with the a little jitter in the results. So they are not going, uh, the database is going to respond not exactly how much patients have diabetes, but something around. So as a data analyst, uh, I don't care if the patients if the count is uh, 40, 48 or 47, but so I can still do my work. Um, but for the patient, I guarantee the privacy. So I cannot reconstruct the data with this kind of function I execute. So really cool, I invite you to, to look at it. All right. So we have standardized the data. They, they speak the same languages. Uh, we can learn from one side to another, really great, we feel the learning. We ensure privacy of the patients, we make sure the data is not leaked, and we also have the question of trust. So, yes, the hospital can trust us, I mean, the data never leave, um, there are no information that, that leave because of pri different privacy, but can we also, us, trust the hospital? I mean, we send them our model, we send, uh, we send them all our value. So, I mean, we, we can trust them, but what happens, we never know. So for that, there is an extra tool. It's multi-party computation. So real quick, I'm going to explain with this, this concept with uh, Alice, Bob, and Charlie. Let's say Alice, Bob, and Charlie wants to know how much they earn on average but they don't want to say individually how much they earn. So how can we do that? Well, each of them are going to split their salary in three different uh, terms, and then they are going to, to share one term with the other and keep one, all right? So Alice has a term from Charlie and Bob, and Bob has one term from Alice and Charlie, and so on, and they are just going to sum these terms, and then they are going to share it. And we have the average. Very simple concept, um, it's very basic. And with this kind of concept, we can do the same with, um, with our tensors, with our models. So we can send to the hospital a bit, a term of our model. We can still do the same operation, they are still valid. and. The, the models that are the that we send have no value by themselves. They need the other parts. So they cannot do something uh, just with that. So when they send us the, the model back, we can reconstruct the model that is trained. So very simple concept, but powerful. And so we have it. So with with these tools and with fire, 
uh, we can have the, a stack that answer to all these problems. How to make them speak the same language? Check. Transfer from one side to another? Check. Guarantee, privacy, check, and long-term partnership. Okay. So we are very excited to um, uh, to do this stack because we think it's really the, the future uh, of this kind of project because we'll be able to learn a, on a large volume of data that are real medical data and we'll still be able to guarantee privacy. So uh, I, I think uh, we're, we're going to to have a new age of um, machine learning with this kind of, of tools. So be able to not only have models on public uh, data, on public data sets that everybody use, but also with real medical data that tackle real medical problems. So we are still at early age on this project and we are very excited. If you have some feedbacks, if you have uh, the same kind of problems, I'll be happy to, to discuss with it, with you. Thank you.